I think we'll get started. Hello, everybody. This is David Markarian. I'm the inventor of the MyoVision. Um, and uh, the, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the EP stress score. It's a new way of looking at static EMG, which has been a, a huge hit, um, and for many different reasons. It stands for electrophysiological stress score. And so the, what we're going to cover today is the research that's been used to support it, the concept of utilizing a baseline. It's very similar to, to doing something like a, a blood pressure measurement. Um, the improved reproducibility, which has occurred, is, a base, uh, is based on this because of the fact that we reduced the impact from sway. Some sample clinical exams to show what, how things actually change, where and when to use it, and some new features and how to upgrade. Whenever I stop, the car shakes. Now, a couple of days ago, I was coming down this... Put your hand here. Brakes. Quarters. Calipers. The calipers. It's okay. Roy! Calipers! Don't you want to take out some tools or something? No, that's not how we do things here. Don't worry about it. Roy! That's not natural. Probably one of my favorite of all time is this particular video because it's been such a powerful image that is created. We don't really want to be this to anybody and so probably one of the best things about utilizing technology like this is the fact that we don't have to be. Um, when it reaches the point where as you know I'm a race car driver and when I took my car in to have an alignment done when I saw this really high-end mechanic utilizing technology in for doing alignment this was the thing that really hit me uh, that you go in and he shows this color graph showing the wheels and their pre-adjustment alignment. And then also when you're done post-alignment, this guy's now two months out to get an alignment because he's so busy with this. I thought it was kind of funny that they use the same terminology as we do, making the adjustments, which shows in the computer. Pretty cool. Let's see. So... First of all, just to make sure we all understand the same thing here. What are we looking at with service EMG? We're not measuring temperature. It's based upon the proven research-based EKG, and the static EMG is measuring, a, um, or all the EMG is measuring tiny, tiny electrical impulses generated when muscles when they contract. So what we're doing is we're basically using a voltmeter for muscle activity. It's more sensitive than the EKG, but the key is that it's the same technology. We're looking at levels of muscle activity or summation of depolarizations. One. When we're doing the static EMG, we're touching the electrodes down to the skin and getting a quick measure of muscle activity. Um, and you can see that we're actually doing a very quick measure and showing this graph, showing us levels of muscle tension. We're showing the compensation for subluxation. Okay, so what we did, though, is we decided to do make some changes in terms of how we look at it. Um, the thing to remember about this is the fact that it's really the same as doing an electronic form of palpation. Uh, people question whether or not static EMG has validity. The question you really want to ask is, is does palpation have validity? Is it worth palpating? The answer is always yes, which uh, to have an electronic form of palpation that actually has significantly better reliability and reproducibility and is objective and is quantifiable is what makes a difference. The other thing is we can see the difference between contracture, muscles that are fatigued and shut off, the difference between contracture and contraction. You cannot determine that with your hands because you can't feel um, the, the lack of electrical activity. So with the EP stress score, all we're doing is simplifying the static EMG by summing, adding up all the readings. These are all in microvolts, adding up all the readings for the test and providing that sum. All right. This is showing an example of a pre and post adjustment static scan where we're looking at EP stress score. You can see it went from 253 and this was done, you know, of course we don't use it this way. We're using it to track progress over time, but this is an example of how you could use it if you wanted to. We did a pre adjustment test here. You can see the readings were 253 prior to adjustment. We we test we did an adjustment and then 10 minutes later or 15 minutes later did the test again and you can see the changes it dropped significantly from pre to post so it shows you how easy it is to then read this by looking at the EP stress score where did it come from so this group out of Virginia um, at the VA hospital did a research study and it was a control group study where there were two groups there were 30 per group 60 people total and what ended up happening was they looked at the level of muscle activity, some of this brilliant researcher recognized that if you just summed all the activity, the EP stress score, 
that you could actually see and track progress. So they compared the VAS score, which in the non-responders was 6.6 .6 pre and then post three months later was 6.8. The microvolt levels, the EP stress score went from 884 to 709, so very little change. Those that did respond to care went from a VAS score of 6 and 542 in the, for the EP stress score to a 1 on their VAS score and 180. So what they concluded was the correlation was very high between the static SEMG, the EP stress score, and VAS score. So you could actually use it as an objective means of a subjective objective test. And here you can see they used the myovision in this study, and here are the details from it. So one of the ways to look at this, it's a kind of a blood pressure cuff for spinal health. So we, we measure, and blood pressure is going to change up and down based on all kinds of things. Same with the static EMG. It's going to vary in the same way that blood pressure does. So you're going to see changes over time. But overall, if there's a spinal, uh, positive changes in spinal health, you'll see the overall result change in a positive way, which is a decrease in activity. Same with blood pressure. Now what's really important here is that it's really critical that we do test standing. This has been established for years. We all know it makes sense logically. If you do a standing test, you're going to get better data. And the reason is that it's a stress test. If we sat someone down, we'd be, an ergonomic, we'd be doing an ergonomic study of the chair itself. And it wouldn't, because we're not really weight-bearing in a seated posture, we're going to see very, very good reproducibility, but clinically irrelevant data. When you stand them, you're stressing them, you're going to get something more similar to an x-ray uh, standing. So, uh, and the studies actually have been established now that prove this. This has shown that the static EMG was, you have the largest effect size from st uh, standing uh, SEMGs versus seated. So important to know. But what happens with EP stress score is as soon as you include or look at it from the EP stress score viewpoint, it removes all of that, that erratic activity you see from sway. So when the body, when the person's standing, we get more clinically valuable information. But the big issue over the years has been, well, look at this patient standing. We did two tests in a row. They're higher on the right on this one, and they're higher on the left on this one. Well, there's a certain amount of sway there, but the overall actual readings, the actual total result, whether they sway left or right, 73 millions of a volt versus 70 millions of a volt. It shows how well the machine works and how accurate and reproducible it really is. Even though the readings have shifted sides because of their motion, the actual sum is the same. This is also true. This was a challenge done in front of about 150 people. And you can see uh, a full spine test 244, 254, they were off by 10 millionths of a volt in two tests. And again, the arrows pointed this direction on this test and this direction on the other. So when you look at the EP stress score, suddenly it all makes sense. The reproducibility is very clear. Interpretation is really simple. Um, when you use the EP stress score, it allows you to provide a single number to the patient. Now, there's two other things you have to be aware of. It's good to look at these. Low readings overall. Uh, the low readings are chronic fatigue, the muscles in fatigue in general. It could be normal, but when you see readings high like this that drop down suddenly, this is a uh, something to be aware of. This could be your worst area is the lowest readings and the highest readings. So other than that, we look at the EP stress score first, and then we look at the actual readings and say, okay, this is our area of concern here, very high readings. We also have uh, very low readings. This was an individual with a herniated disc, and you can see the muscles are in fatigue from firing on a continuous basis. This is a contracture state that we talked about. But we can still track their progress with the EP stress score. It makes it easy. Now, this is the concept. We want to gather a baseline. So we're taking a baseline on the patient. This is our initial test here when they first come in. You can see it's 175. Now you're going to see basically two conditions out there, the acute and the chronic. The acute, you're going to see the EP stress score is going to be high when they first come in, and it will start dropping over time. And here they are over five months. You can see the change from 175 to 88. There, you can see it in the graph too, but this gives you an actual single number to make it easy to understand. The second case you see is the chronic that comes in. Now this isn't a great example of chronic, but it still shows some areas here and here where these are shut off from being in chronic fatigue. The readings start out at a level that's a little lower. They go up after your re-exam or at your re-exam. You can see it went to 316, which is not quite double, but almost. 
and then it drops back down again over time. This is at six months. You can see how it's balanced out now. So these are the kind of things you see is they're high on one side, there's uh, uh, lower readings to start, they go up, and then they balance out over time. This is a common thing. So these are the two conditions we typically are seeing clinically, and these are real tests on real individuals. Just to show you some common problems, just to keep you aware of this. When you see, this is just a reminder for those, when you see high readings in the mid-thoracic, mid to upper thoracic, that's typically caused by head forward position. It makes you look like a great doc when you point out to the individual, hey, uh, you've been working on your laptop too much, you know, get a monitor and keyboard. And uh, when you're at work, make sure to get the monitor high up so your head's back and kind of help the patient with their ergonomics. So it's one of the things you'll, you'll start noticing a lot of these these days, uh, especially with laptops and smartphones, we sit uh, with our head tilted forward and it doesn't help this head forward position issue. Another one we're seeing continually is when you see readings that are super high in the upper, thoracic, in the upper cervical, sorry, um, Ask them if they have any issues with grinding their teeth, bruxism, or TMJ. You'll be surprised how many of them do. These really high readings are very correlate highly with uh, TMJ issues. So it's something else you can you can be aware of. Some subtle little things about the static EMG I'm adding. Now, as far as the recommended use for EP stress score, I don't recommend it for doing screenings, and the reason is it doesn't really mean that much on its own. It's best to use it in the office for tracking patient progress. You can see where they start and, and where they're going over time. Uh, you can send it in the e-scan. E-scan is great for sending all this information to the patient because they get it on their smartphone. A uh, byproduct of e-scan was that they received it three times. They received a reinforcement for your message three times, which is by getting it on their smartphones. No app required. It's just sending email, getting it in their uh, on their iPad, and then also getting it in their email. Um, make sure you use the same test for all. So if you do full spine tests, do a full spine test or a quick screen, but do not do both. You can't mix them. You can't compare tests, obviously, unless they're exactly the same test. So if it's a, the quick screen test you're doing, then great, stick to that. But choose your test when you're using the EP stress score. One of the byproducts I saw in beta testing when we did um, gather this information and present it to the patients was this immense uh, relief on the patient's uh, part as far as the validation it provided. I was shocked in beta testing to hear the, the two things I heard most commonly were, wow, when we sent it to their phone, they got it within 10 seconds. I heard the patients say, wow, that's really cool. Secondly, it's really cool my doctor has this. But the third thing, which was bigger, was they were, everyone, no matter who, if you're running a cash practice, um, you're going to find that a lot of people have those at home that are actually questioning, why are you still seeing the chiropractor? I mean, many of them come in to see you because they're in pain from some auto accident or whatever but there's many that want to stay and continue to see you. The number of, of patients said, wow, now I can s show my husband why I need to see my chiropractor and would forward it on is amazing. Uh, the other thing I saw them do is they put it up on Facebook and they were showing this to their friends and family um, and uh, they would put the, the tests up on Facebook. They would also forward them to friends and family. Uh, you go to dinner after seeing you and they would uh, show it to their whoever they're having dinner with and show them this is me right now. I was amazed at that and, and having that information uh, on your business down here is like having an electronic business card. You can change this message to say whatever you want to. So a very powerful way to get the information across. As far as the new features in the software, there's some really big changes that have occurred. You can play with the colors on the back graph now. The, the blue, you can actually make it so that it's darker or lighter if you don't want to print. Uh, if you're printing these still and you want to reduce the amount of ink, you can make it black and white. You can ch change the depth of blue. The battery life's improved dramatically. What's happened there is that we found individuals that are getting really poor battery life, it was because they were talking to patients while they were doing the tests. So I, I implemented a uh, battery saver feature where they shut off, the device actually shut off, after a fixed amount of time, which you can set, uh, which is saving a tremendous amount of battery life because all you have to do is hit the buttons, turn it back on again, but they aren't sitting on while the patient's being tested and you're talking to them. Uh, the speed has improved dramatically. I've made AutoScan significantly more um, sensitive as far as the uh, its ability to, to, to store data at a specific amount of time. So it's actually very quick at settling now. You'll see a huge difference, probably about three times faster than it was prior. 
uh, the software also looks very sophisticated. The e-marketing VE scan obviously is a big deal. Um, that's been a real big hit. Uh, but I just wanted you to know these new features are all in the feature pack B or the eScan plus EP stress score software. Uh, again, I pointed out this out about the eScan that you can use this as a great way of having an electronic business card. And it also saves a ton of paper. We're assuming now by looking at the, the way when we add up how many people are using this machine, we're saving about 300,000 pages of paper a year at this point and maybe even more. Now for those, just so you're aware of this, for those that are doing PI, if you haven't heard, uh, it's become a really big deal. Um, you know, you get paid on this. It's been a huge hit with attorneys. Uh, I personally did a presentation to a subgroup of the Bar Association here in Washington State, which led to uh, all these changes in terms of the, the integration. We've won more and more cases with this. People are being paid on a continuous basis. Uh, very little issues with reimbursement at all, about 250 a test. Uh, but what's really cool is that I changed the software so that um, we actually show pictures of the body in motion showing what's actually happening. And it makes it very easy for everyone from patients to attorneys to understand. And it's been really powerful in the courtroom having these type of graphics. Uh, in addition, uh, the software does an output. So when you actually are in the software and you're performing a test, once you actually have the test results up, let's say we have a dynamic test, we have it up, you right click, go to interpretation, and it generates by clicking on this, the template, it generates a, an interpretation report, which uh, looks like this, filling in all the details with the patient and showing a nice picture showing how we did the test itself, showing normal graphs, and then also, to make it very simple, you just select what you see on the, as these drop-downs. You can select normal, moderately, or, or abnormal. And at the bottom, you'd go down here, put your own conclusion in. You're done with this interpretation in about five minutes. You could store the template with your own signature in it, save it as a PDF and send it off to the attorney or whoever it is that needs it. So a very quick way to gather that information. So in addition, you've got all kinds of changes as far as the software. You can go to the settings, uh, setup, general. You can change the, um, the colors. You can change the, uh, the colors, the graphs. You can change the, um, hold on a second. We can go in here and change the message in eScan. You can make it say whatever you want. Here's where you can put the message. You can change fonts, the colors, whatever you'd like to change. It's all in here. We can go to setup. We can go to static. And you can see in here, you can go to EP score, change the colors you want to use for the EP stress score. You can also change the size of that number on the, the graph itself. You can select all the different things to show. You can change the back, back edge graph image itself. Uh, makes it very simple to do. What's really cool is training links here. You can actually click these and it takes you right to the website for help on various topics. So if you ever need help with anything, go to support.myvision.com um, and you can search on various questions you need answers to or you can use the training links built into the, into the software itself. Uh, you can also, if you need remote support, we've added that here. Um, so a lot of cool new features. It looks very sophisticated. Um, in addition, let's go here to the, this is really what's been happening. Uh, we've been winning case after case. We have a million dollar case in, in currently in. Uh, but to get the software, oh, and, and some questions people have been asking, um, what you're going to do is go to myvision.com and you'll see on the main page there's a red button on the far right saying, uh, ask me, uh, please send me information on, on my, you know, fill out your all personal information and I'll tell you exactly what pricing is for you based on how long you've had the system. Um, the software update does allow you to uh, take all old data. The EP stress score does apply to all your data back to 1990, approximately six. So if you have old patients in your database or you have a wired system and you upgrade to the wireless. Now this all applies to the wireless only. We stopped developing software for the wired system probably about eight years ago. Um, but the new update in includes all kinds of improvements for eScan too. It reduces the possibility of spam because we change over now. It requires you put in your email address. We had a generic one which was leading to some issues with potential issues with spam. 
Um, and so the other part is that when you do get this, we do a remote setup on your computer for you, and we can transfer all your data from your old system. So those that have a wired system and want to upgrade, it's a good time to do it. We will tra transfer all your data to the new. It'll take minutes to do, but we'll do it for you and do it remotely. And that's the, probably the best way to get the, the system is to purchase this. But if you fill out the information at myvision.com, you'll see. Let me show it to you so you can understand. You'll see it on the when you when you come to the new MyVision website, uh, you'll notice that it's on the upper right here. Send me my special pricing, and all you have to do is click this and fill out all your information. And by sending this, we'll actually look up how long you've had the system and the pricings based on this. You'll see the software on the MyVision store also, and you can fill out something there uh, and send that also. But this is the best way to get the the best price on it currently. So let's see if there's any questions here. Do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Let's see. Okay, great. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll try to, let's see here. Let's see if I could open this up for questions by using the audio.